I do wake up a lot of times thinking of, of crepes. So yeah, maybe I do dream of crepes. You know, I, I fell in love with them on a, on a trip in Paris, having my first crepe. I thought it was the uh, coolest experience ever. And I started researching crepes and I saw that there, there wasn't a lot done to them. I love them because I can do so many different things with them. And breakfast just, to, you know, happens to be my favorite meal of the day. And crepes was a perfect vessel for me to tell like a culinary story. I look at the classics, like what you see in classic creperies, and I look at that and I just look at how we can make it more modern, more progressive, and a little bit more adventurous and playful. One of our crepes are called the first time, um, and it was based on the, the trip to Paris, where it was just straight Nutella. Um, and I, I didn't know what Nutella was, and I was just, it was fascinating to me. One of the newest crepes on the menu that really makes me proud is the, the hummus crepe. We do chickpeas three ways. We do a hummus, and then we do a chickpea crepe, and then we do um, flash chickpeas. So it's chickpea three ways, and it symbolizes um, how much I love what we do because it, it kind of like encourages diners to eat with their hands. So they're involved in it as much as we are when we prepare it, and as much as our farmers are, you know, harvesting the ingredients. The biggest surprise for me since we've opened is the culture, just the support and the excitement that we get from the community. Um, it's been a, a big surprise. Everybody that plays a part in creating this breakfast and lunch place that I'm really proud of. So Chris, tell me about Crepe Bar. So Crepe Bar is kind of a, a very interesting space. It actually, uh, the chef started with a food truck years and years ago and kind of set down roots in the strip mall. And it's again, sort of the urban kind of loft vibe. I wasn't expecting it to be as um, industrial as it was. Mm -hmm. And I thought that it would be like more like a sit down restaurant, but it's really, if you think about it, it's called Crepe Bar. Mm -hmm. when it's you not think a French it cafe way. with lacy curtains. No, no it is no. not. And that's, no. actually, that's actually represented in the chef. He has tattoos all over. And so the art kind of mirrors yeah. his own aesthetic, okay. I think. Yeah. And what did you think, Julie? I walked in as soon as they opened. They open at seven. And I was greeted instantly with a smile and a hello and a good morning. Yeah. So, I mean, that was perfect. Yeah. Well, greeting's everything. Fantastic. It is. Yeah. It is. That was the first everything. impression. They, they, right. they make the difference in an yeah. experience, exactly. for sure. Sounds warm, wonderful. It was. What did you have to start? I had a tahini chicken crepe. Well, that's different. They've married a couple of different disciplines. It <laughs> was amazing. I will have to say, when I found out I was going to be visiting this restaurant, I was a little like, oh boy, here we go, a crepe. <laughs> My memory of crepes are not memorable. Mm -hmm. And I was pleasantly surprised. The flavors were amazing. Not anything that I would ever dream up. Yeah. Well, I think we in this country think of uh, crepes as sweet mostly, and, that, mm -hmm. and they right. really are more often savory. And of course, the French did have a lot of uh, influence in, in that part of the world where tahini's from So uh, at one point. So they're, they're with their travels and whatnot. We'll leave it at what not. Chris. <laughs> uh, so to start with, they brought out some granola. Uh, and it's kind of a nice little thing that they do is they bring out different treats that the chef's like been working on that day. Which at a restaurant that serves crepes for basically eight bucks, you don't expect to see little baby dishes coming out. And it's whatever he's worked on. Um, so one time I was there and he actually brought out a single sweet potato chip under a dome of glass and there was smoke inside of it. And so oh. when he pulled it up, the smoke wow. wafted out. And I'm like, where am I? Uh, this is amazing. It's like, kind like, of a, gas it's like a gastropub sort of yeah. experience. Wow. Uh, and then, yeah, so we so did the cool. we did the granola to start with, and it's homemade granola. It's oh. some of the best granola. I think uh, Libby mentioned took I home two bags. Two yeah. We, we <laughs> took home yeah. a bag. They it's were so good. So good. Did you bring has... any today, Libby? That's I did not. <laughs> yeah. I did not. Oh, Come on, no. I'm sorry. You're um, bragging on it. Next idea. time, yeah. um, but they ha it has like uh, all kinds of different nuts and um, dried fruit mm -hmm. and cranberries a little and salt to it, just a little. Yeah, like something. It was just my mom and I were like. Please tell me that they sell this. And <laughs> the lady's like, oh, we do. And I'm like, yes, do you two of them wrap it did up. did you have milk on it? I, I, oh, I, when okay. I took it home, I had it with Greek yogurt. Oh. Sometimes yeah. I've been there, they've served it with a little, tiny little beaker of milk. Okay. And you can pour, you can pour, it, it, you can pour it over. Yeah. Okay. It's be, a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd go heavy cream, but I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> I just go right for it. You know, I've Why stopped not? apologizing. <laughs> Why not? So what did you have for your, for your next course, Libby? I went with my mom, my dad, and my fiance. Well, okay, so my dad has been making crepes my whole life. But we are Croatian, we call them Pelachankis. Mm -hmm. And we make them completely different than the French make them. So we were like really pumped to go here. We were so excited. When I was a kid, my dad used to make buckwheat pancakes. Uh -huh. And when we moved from Pittsburgh to here, we couldn't find any buckwheat mix. So they had a buckwheat crepe that they had. And it was buckwheat and lemon curd and some almonds. Mm -hmm. 
as soon as I took a bite of it, I felt like I was like transferred back to being a 10 year old girl oh, eating wow. those pancakes, honestly. Cool. So uh, my memories of crepes have always been positive and awesome. Like I've loved, we love crepes, my whole family does. So getting that buckwheat one, oh, it was so good. The lemon curd and a little bit of honey mm -hmm. and some roasted um, almonds. I don't know what kind of almonds they were, but they were amazing, fantastic. It was just fantastic. It really I was. love how food can bring you back. Yeah. You know, right. Taste memories and just bring you back somewhere. Yep. Sounds yeah. like it did. It totally awesome. did. Chris? Totally did. My main course was what they call the Grand Prix, mm -hmm. and it's this fantastic, bizarre concoction. It's, I think it's a maple crepe, and then they serve it with essentially two over-easy eggs on top, and then there's actually pork belly and pork oh crackling gosh. served on the plate. And then they use like a little bit of coffee as well. It's this oh, crazy so combination. <laughs> it's just like, I, I, would, I don't want to say this because it's a horrible thing to say to compare it to a McGriddle, <laughs> but it's the flavor, oh, of, it's the flavor yeah. of maple, but the egg and bacon. And, and it's you so, can't. it's like the best version of a McGriddle you could ever imagine. Sweet and savory. Which really oh, doesn't do it justice, this frankly. Called no. the Mac Daddy. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah. way to put it. I mean, cracklings and yeah. pork belly. We used to have them available only at a certain time and I'd always get there after 11 and I'd always be like, do you have one for me? Uh, but now they've started to bring them. There's still limited availability because he gets his pork belly, I think, uh, from Queen Creek, and it's he only gets one delivery, and then he's got to yeah. manage how much he has. But it's it's absolutely incredible. And dessert, Chris. Uh, for dessert, my wife ended up picking up the Arizona honey crepe. So it was basically honey, and then I think the same almonds and pistachios, kind of this candied almond on them. Uh, and they have this just the local honey in his crepe batter, and it was mm. del completely delicious. Julie, what do you have? Well, I'm going to say I drank my dessert again. <laughs> so. right, I'm, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. I had a vanilla uh, salted caramel latte. Oh. That's iced. what I had. Yeah, oh. it was delicious. I don't usually drink the coffee frou-frou drinks, and it was not sweet, like no, crazy, like my teeth are going to fall out yeah, sweet. No. Nice. Um, like and that. a really great espresso. And I it mean, was super strong, which I love. It, it yeah. was. I mean, yeah. you could, it wasn't yeah. all just yeah. syrup. Right, it was, no, not at all. You could really taste, taste the espresso the, in yeah. it. Like, mm -hmm. yay. They take their yeah. coffee pretty seriously. They, you, yeah. can yeah. Tell. you can tell. You can tell. Oh, for sure. and they take all their ingredients yeah. seriously. Yes. They do. Yeah. They do. Sourcing. Yes. 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 Yeah. If you would like to try Crepe Bar, reservations are not accepted. The average tab for breakfast or lunch is $12 without drinks.